pleased with us and he loves us based on what Jesus did. Jesus' his righteousness has been imputed to us. But on the same token, if you don't lend yourself to the Word of God, lend yourself to looking in and rightly dividing the Word of truth, then the truth you don't know can't set you free. So I say that again. The truth that you don't know can't set you free. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. But you've got to know the truth. You have to desire to know the truth. You have to want to walk in the truth. First uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2 says you have to present your life a living sacrifice. That's great. But it says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that takes time. It takes a portion of your day to get it. To get into the Word of God, to get into some good teaching, to get in and have a relationship with Christ in the Word, Amen. And allow Him, allow Him to reveal the truth, Amen. To renew your mind to the truth, so that you can be set free. You see, God desires His thoughts towards you are peace, are good, and not of evil. But you, if you haven't discovered God's thoughts towards you, the completion of God, the complete thoughts of God. The complete truth of God. If you haven't found that out, then you by choice are rejecting the truth. You by choice have chosen not to know the truth. It's not because God's not revealing His will. It's not because God's not revealed His truth. It's by you by choice. You see, it's hand in hand. God by grace approves of you, loves you, is not displeased with you based on you receiving the atoning work of Jesus Christ. That's good. That's from God's side. But from your side, you have a responsibility to find out what that truth is, to find out what Jesus did for you, to find out what the will of God. God desires to, for you to know His will for you and your life, to know the truth. Amen. The truth in every experience that you're going to experience today, He desires to know that desires for you to know that, but if you don't take the time and respond to that truth that God has revealed, then you by your choice are rejecting the truth of the Word of God. You by choice are rejecting and saying, I don't need to know the truth. I'm going to live my life the way I want to live. And so you're not walking in the truth at that point. You're walking in your own way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, Jesus said. He's revealed that truth. You have to choose to walk in that truth. I am the way, the truth, and life. Have the relationship with Jesus Christ, amen? Jesus is the express image of the Father. If you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. That's what it said there, John 14, 9. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. How can you say you haven't seen the Father? When if you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. You see, God's revealed, if it be thy will, is one of the most damning teachings of religion. The will of God is revealed. The will of God is there for you to know. You have to desire to know the will. You have to want to know the will. To know the will is to know the truth. Jesus said, my, my words are spirit and they are life. But you can take the printed page here, and you can twist it and make void the Word of God. Make void the truth, the truth that sets you free. You can twist it. That's why you must get into the Word. You must allow the, the Word of God, you know, the life of Christ, let the Word of God balance the Word of God. You read one portion of Scripture here, and you say, that's the Word, that's what I'm going to hang on to, that's the truth. But there is always a balancing truth, a completion of the complete truth in the Word of God. So you've got to take all of the Word, let the Word of God interpret the Word of God, and also along with that, look at the life of Christ in the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. See how He lived the truth, how He walked. He said He always did that which was pleasing the Father. Do you want to please the Father God? Do you want to please your Father in Heaven? Well, you wait a minute, you said we are. He's already pleased. True, He is already pleased based on Jesus' atoning work, based on Jesus' righteousness. Jesus fulfilled it. But on the same token, the balance of the truth says, to keep myself walking in the truth, to keep myself in that place where God continues to be pleased with me, 
I need to walk pleasing to Him. I need to find out what the truth is, receive the truth, and walk in that. You see, God is not displeased with you. God does not stop loving you when you mess up. As much as any parent looks at their child, and if the child disobeys them and doesn't do them, they may for a time uh, react with anger. They shouldn't, but that's human nature. But what parent kicks a kid out of the house? They take a nine-year-old kid, say a, 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 a nine-year-old kid, the kid messes up, does something wrong, and, and does that parent go out and kick the kid out of the house at nine years old? No, the kid would be, I mean, some people might, they're dumb, they're stupid, I can't, be, I'm talking about the perfect parent, <laughs> the God kind of parent, doesn't kick the kid out of the house. Say, go away, I don't have nothing to do with you anymore. See, you got to understand that God is pleased with us based on Jesus' righteousness being imputed to you. God doesn't look at your righteousness, He looks at Jesus' righteousness. Unless you purposely promote your righteousness over Jesus' righteousness, then He will look at it, and then He will say, your righteousness is as filthy rights. Why don't you take the righteousness of my Son? I have imputed it, I have given it to you. But you see, God wants us to walk in that, continue to walk in that. You see, just as much as a parent it gets ecstatic, is happy over seeing their children be obedient, that's what the Father does. He continues in His happiness and His pleasing. It, God doesn't stop loving you, and He doesn't stop, in the sense, of pleased with you, because the righteousness of God is still imputed to you. But He says to walk in love. He says to continue in my love. Continue in that place, amen? Because I, of Jesus is pleased with you, continue to walk in that. That doesn't make God any more displeased with you if you don't, but in the same token, He wants you to walk in His good pleasure. His thoughts toward Jews are good and not toward evil, amen? Does that make sense, or did I just muddy the water? <laughs> See, God is a parent. If you've been born after God... He's your parent. He's your father now. The Word existed. If you want to know, see that it says in the beginning was the Word. The Word existed and the Word was face to face with God. Jesus seen, seen the Father. There is no difference between them in the sense of what Jesus said. I always do that which pleases my Father. What I hear, that I do. What I hear in the ear, that I speak, he says. What I see the Father do, that's what I do. Interpret Scripture that way. Don't let the devil come in with religious tradition and religious ideas and concepts that aren't the Word of God and let it muddy the water. Let it make the Word of God, make the truth of God of none effect. Jesus said, "My The man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That's true. You should live... Have you gotten your daily bread today? Have you gotten your daily word from God which by you may live? See, it's not enough to come to church on Sunday. I can spoon feed you and give you the word of God, but it says man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. How many of us like bread in here? <laughs> How many like to eat bread every day? How many get fat on bread if they eat it every day? <laughs> But nevertheless, bread is necessary. You see, you can't just come to church on Sunday and feed bread and eat once a week. How many of us eat once a week? None of us that I know of. You all eat every day. And it's the spiritual side of you. You see, you're born after God. Your spirit is born after God's spirit. Your spirit needs to feed, eat bread every day. It's not the bread that's out there in the bread box. It's the bread of life. Jesus is the bread of life. The Word of God is said, Jesus said, My words are spirit and they are life. You have to feed on it. If your spirit man doesn't feed on the Word of God, it becomes sickly. <laughs> In one sense. In the sense, this is the sense of that. The sense that what controls you is it... Or is your life being influenced by your spirit, born after God's spirit, or is it being influenced by your natural man? Whichever you feed becomes stronger in your life. 
If you feed the natural man, the natural man will rule your life. If you feed the spirit man, the spirit side of you will influence and move and control your life. Guess what? Does God make that choice for you? He doesn't. Oh, no. I thought we were supposed to pray if it be thy will. If you want to make me strong today, God, make me strong. That's not the word. That's not Bible. No, he says, feed on my word. In man shall not live by bread alone, which means to turn it around. You can't live by bread alone. You have to live by the bread of heaven, though every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Right? So what influence is it? You make the choice of the influence in your life. God says, my thoughts towards you are good. But you make the choice on a day-to-day -day basis. You make the decision which one is going to become stronger. My natural man is going to rule, or my spiritual man is going to rule. Born after God's spirit is going to rule. And that this one of those decisions is by which one you feed more. Do you feed the natural man more? Or do you feed the spiritual man more? If you feed this, don't feed the spiritual man, then the natural man is become strong and rules and influences and controls your life. You see, each of us make that decision every day. We have to come face to face. It said, in the beginning the Word existed, and the Word was face to face with God, yea, the Word was God Himself. He is the one who was face to face with God in the beginning. It was through Him that everything created. You see, Jesus created man, Adam and Eve, in the beginning. And you have to understand that that is that same Word that must have influence, the same Jesus Christ that must have influence and control. Are you fellowshipping with Jesus today? You say, that's prayer. Well, that's true. Are you fellowshipping with Jesus, the Word, today? The truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father, he told Philip. Are you letting the light shine into your life? What? You make a decision, you see. You make a choice. Do I believe the old religious teaching and pray if it be thy will? And never search out what the will of God is. You see, God reveals all the deep things. The Spirit of God reveals all the deep things of God. The Spirit of God reveals. It says that Jesus, it says Jesus said He would send the comfort and He would lead you and guide you into all truth. Jesus told them to wait, at the, wait in the upper room until they received the Holy Spirit who would make them witnesses into all the earth. Who would, would, the Holy Spirit would come and give them power. See, yes, that is the, the Word of God, but it also is the third person of the Trinity, third person of the Godhead is the Spirit of God. So the Word, feeding your spirit, man, you're born after God's Spirit, the Word of God will give it, will make it strong. Amen. will give it more in the sense, I know that if you're born after God, your spirit, man, is already strong. Your spirit, man, is born after God. It's born after... It is like Christ, it is the Spirit of Christ. But we're talking about strong in the sense of influence in your life. What influences your life? Is it your born after God Spirit, or is it your natural man? And then the second thing you need, you need the power of the Holy Spirit. You don't have the power of the Holy Spirit by praying, if it be thy will. You have to actively pursue and seek God to receive the power of the Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes, I believe it's with the evidence of speaking in tongues. The other church, the religion, teaches that you can get the Holy Spirit or that you have it when you're born again. No, you do not have the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Jesus taught and preached, and the New Testament church, by example, had a subsequent experience with God after being born again, and that was the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues.